Good afternoon. Would you like to be guided by the Bible as you prepare for the upcoming election? Now, I'm not going to quote scripture passages to support the position of one candidate or party over the other. Instead, I'd like to talk with you about a passage that can guide how we conduct ourselves during this contentious time. The passage I'd like to consider is Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. And this passage begins by saying, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Well, that might lead you to ask, well, which is it? Is it six things that the Lord hates, or is it seven things that are detestable? Well, this is how poetry operated in the ancient Hebrew language. The answer is seven. We have a list of seven things that God hates. Now, as we look at them, there's something important to keep in mind. It is easy to consider these things and start thinking about other people. We can think about how the Lord hates what other people are doing and how this list applies to what they are thinking and saying. But that's not the purpose of this passage. <laughs> in fact, that's not the pa purpose for most passages of Scripture. The Bible is meant to be a mirror that you hold up to yourself to see how you measure up. Now, it's a good thing to keep these seven things that God doesn't like in mind generally, but for me, they seem to be particularly relevant in a run-up to November 5th. So here's the list. Here are the things that the Lord hates. First, haughty eyes. Haughty means being proud. Haughty eyes means I'm proud of my candidate, and I'm going to look down my nose at people who support that other candidate. If you have haughty eyes, you think you're better than someone else because you're right and they're wrong. But remember, our value as human beings, our value as children of God, is not dependent upon our political affiliations. The second thing that the Lord hates is a lying tongue. So, as you're talking politics with people, are you fact-checking yourself? Because we know there are people out there who are intentionally spreading lies. They are literally making stuff up in order to help one candidate and hurt the other. We know that there are foreign powers trying to influence our election. It's pretty obvious that news organizations are telling stories in ways to try to win a bigger market share. So make sure you are not adding to the lies. Check the sources of what you've heard before you repeat them to make sure what you're saying actually is accurate. The third thing that the Lord hates is hands that shed innocent blood. When our rhetoric gets heated, it becomes more likely that someone will resort to violence. <laughs> and unfortunately, we saw that happen not far from here back in July with the assassination attempt against President Trump. So, do what you can to cool things down. Commit yourself to a peaceful response to our election results. It used to go without saying that, but people are worried that things may happen like they happened four years ago. We might have a repeat of January 6th or maybe even something worse. Fourth, something else that the Lord hates is a heart that devises wicked schemes. Politicians and their supporters, unfortunately, often act out of self-interest. What's in it for me? How can I benefit if I win or if my candidate wins? Now, the goal should not be what's best for me, but what is best for our nation. Now, you and I may disagree about what is best for our nation or how we can get to that goal, but hopefully that is the goal we all share what is the best for our nation, and not how do I benefit personally. The fifth thing that Proverbs tells us that the Lord hates are feet that are quick to rush into evil. I'm sure you've heard the expression, the ends justify the means. So if I have to step on other people to get my way, well, that's okay. 
and it doesn't matter if I have to hurt them as long as my cause is right. That's not what the Lord wants. Seek to reach your goals by the proper methods. If it's the right thing to get, then you can get it doing the right thing. 6. The Lord hates a false witness who pours out lies. All right, well, we've already mentioned the lying tongue all the way back at number 2. But truth is in such danger that apparently Proverbs thinks it's worth repeating. We have conspiracy theories floating all around us. Everything from back when Hillary Clinton said that she was a victim of a vast right-wing conspiracy, all the way up to just a couple weeks ago, when people said that in North Carolina you better not take money from FEMA or else they're going to take your property away from you. Now, don't add to these conspiracy theories. Seventh and finally, probably most importantly to keep in mind for us all, what the Lord hates is a person who stirs up conflict in the community. So commit yourself to unity, even more important than committing yourself to whichever candidate you support. Because we, politics has caused problems in many families, in many neighborhoods, even in many churches. Now, we may not all agree on which candidates we're going to vote for, but I hope we can all agree to avoid these seven things that God hates. Would you pray with me, please? Holy God, first, I am grateful that we live in a nation in which we are free to choose our leaders. I do pray, Lord, that you would be at work in our nation. And I pray not for the success of one candidate over another, but I pray that in the midst of our seeking to find out who we want as our leaders, we will avoid these seven things that we know you hate. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.